Hi folks, I'm Fred. This is Wood Tools Workshop. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the less used moving parts of a drill press. Under the hood of the drill press are one or two belts on pulleys. The pulleys are graduated in different sizes so that as you change a belt from one size to the next, you change the speed of the drill press spindle. In order to do this, you have to loosen the belts to have room to work with them. And then, of course, you have to tighten the belts back in order to use the drill press. Here's how that works. One of the pulleys is attached to the motor at the back of the drill press. The motor floats on two bars that can slide back and forth horizontally. The bars are held in place by two lock knobs on either side of the drill press head. If you loosen the two lock knobs, then you can use the belt tension adjusting lever to slide the motor back and forth. That all works fine with my shop fox, but my little Cummins drill press has developed a problem. The tension lever doesn't work. So I've been getting by with squeezing the belts to loosen them and using a screwdriver to tighten them. But I'm ready to sell the Cummins now, so it's time to do something about it. I know that the tension lever has a cam on it that engages the horizontal bars. My guess is that a pin has sheared loose and the cam is spinning or else has come off the shaft of the lever. Whatever the case, we've got to get down inside the head of the drill press, and right now, the pulley guard's in the way. That middle pulley is an idler pulley. It swings around on an offset shaft. Studying the diagram, I couldn't figure out how it was attached, and finally I realized it isn't. It's just sitting there by gravity. We don't have to take off the pulley on the motor because the hole in the pan is big enough for it to slip through. But the one in front is attached to the spindle and it proved to be tricky. To begin with, it's held in place by a nut of unknown size. I could not find out the size of that nut by looking in the manual, looking at the diagram, looking up the part online, or just doing a general search. Finally, it just came down to try until you get it. See, I don't have a socket set that big, so I was going to the pawn shop and buying individual sockets, trying to match it by guessing. It took three tries to get it right. The spindle has a slight taper to it. The pulley's jammed down on that taper, and it's got a good grip. The pulley won't just lift off, so I had to get a pulley puller. A big thank you to O'Reilly Auto Parts for loaning their tools out. This may be the only time I ever have to do this, and I really didn't want to buy a pulley puller. The pulley puller has a shaft in the middle that has to rest on something solid, and then as you turn it, the three claws gradually pull upward. But in this case, the part in the middle rides up and down and couldn't be counted on to hold the puller steady. So after a lot of head scratching, I finally decided I would hold the spindle in a down position and put a washer across there to give the support I need. Now that the pulleys are out of the way, there are just four screws holding the box in place. Once I got inside the head casing, I found that there wasn't a problem with the cam after all. Instead, a retaining ring on the lever had come loose, allowing the shaft to slip back and forth, which disengaged the cam. 
At first I tried putting the ring back in place, but I didn't figure that would work, and I was right, it didn't. I had to get a new one. The retaining ring fits into a groove cut in the shaft, and if I can put it back on with my bare fingers, it's not going to stay. I could put a new ring on the shaft without taking it out of the casing, but I wanted to take it to my workbench where I had room to fool with it. On the left is the old ring that wouldn't stay, and on the right is a new ring, and now we see why the old ring wouldn't stay. There's a special kind of pliers made for working with these retaining rings. Retaining ring pliers is what they're called. Who to thunk? The pointed tips of the pliers fit in the two holes on the ring, spread it apart, and then you're able to fit it into the groove where it will stay when you let go. So I went to the hardware store and I picked out a pair of those pliers and then I was back in the hardware section looking for these rings when a man came up to help me. And so he, we found the rings and we took one out and he said, here, let me see the pliers. And he spread the ring apart and fitted it on the shaft and it fit properly. So he said, okay, looks like that's the size you need. And he walked away. And I thought, well, that was mighty sweet of him. So I took the pliers and I put them back on the display rack and paid for the ring and came on back to the shop.